Hey guys and welcome to my channel. In today's episode we are at the Universal City Walk and we're going to be going into the Universal Park which is a really really big entertainment park. There's a bunch of rides, there's a bunch of different themes and I'm a big movie buff. I've always loved a bunch of movie stuff. So yeah we're going to be exploring this place and also they just opened the Nintendo World which is a really really cool thing because I'm a video game addict. I've grown up with Mario and all his friends and I'm super excited to be seeing this and also to be sharing this with you guys. So without any further ado, let's explore. Universal Studios is an American film production and distribution company owned by Comcast to the NBC Universal Film and Entertainment Division of NBC Universal. Founded in 1912, Universal is the oldest surviving film studio in the United States. Both the film studio and theme park are located in the San Fernando Valley area of the Los Angeles County in California. Its official marketing headline is the entertainment capital of LA. The theme park was initially created to offer tours of the real Universal Studios sets and is the first of many full-fledged Universal Studios theme parks located across the world. Once you're past the main gates, well, you're going to find yourself in a main street that has a bunch of stores and restaurants and cafes. And it's really, really cool because it's kind of like an outdoor museum because, well, Universal Studios is a studio that makes a bunch of movies. So a lot of memorabilia from the movies are on this street and you get to see New York City cabs, Jurassic Park themed stuff and also buildings that do kind of feel like they're part of a movie but we can't really pinpoint exactly what movie they're from but it just makes me happy being a movie buff and being here surrounded by all this stuff that is movie based because it's really really cool and then I know that once I pass the street I'm gonna be in the actual park and I'm gonna get to enjoy a bunch of rides too. The modern day theme park evolved from an idea that started in 1962 when Universal Accountants suggested a new tour in the studio commissary which would hopefully increase profits. On July 15, 1964, the modern day tour was established to include a series of dressing room walkthroughs, peeks at actual productions, and later staged events. This grew over the years into a full-blown theme park. The main shopping street leading to the rides is a really good introduction to the park itself. Lined with palm trees and filled with many stores, restaurants, and cafes, the buildings feel like they could easily belong inside the film studio with architecture that somewhat feels like early 20th century buildings with a bunch of bricks and ornaments on the sides, but also showing off different street styles ranging from a New York City street to what we might expect from a random European street. One of the biggest sections at Universal Studios is the Harry Potter world. And I must say, it is majestic. It's truly like walking in one of the Harry Potter movies. And also a lot of the architecture and the buildings that are built are in real stone or something that looks really similar to stone. So even when you touch the outside of these buildings, it feels real and it's pretty darn authentic. And even though Harry Potter is not truly a Universal franchise, it's more of a Warner Brothers, it is right here at Universal. They must have been able to buy the rights. But it is really cool. There's a bunch of stores. There's some stores that even exist in the movies. And then there's restaurants. And even inside the restaurants, everything looks so authentic in a way. And yeah, if you are a Harry Potter fan and you're trying to live the dream of being in one of the movies, this is the place to go. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter opened at Universal Studios Hollywood on April 7, 2016, replacing the adventures of Curious George. The flagship attraction is the flight simulating ride, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, similar to the one in Orlando. Even though the ride is fun, what's more amazing to me is the exterior of the ride which is made to look like a somewhat full-size scale Hogwarts castle filled with extreme detail and literally feels like one could simply walk into every chamber that is featured in the books. The Wizarding World is a fully fledged little town featuring many stone-like buildings with rooftops decorated with fake snow. Many fan favorite key moments from the books are also on display in this area going from the Hogwarts Express, which is a full-size replica of the train, to the flying car featured in Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, to the wand shop in Diagon Alley. A cartoon that has been popular ever since its release date, over 30 years ago, well, it's The Simpsons. I think that the first season aired in 1990 and now we're in 2023 and here it is just as popular. And at Universal Studios they have a whole section dedicated to The Simpsons which is kind of crazy because well they did go kind of overboard with a lot of the decorations. There's Moe's Tavern, there's a bunch of other places that have to do with the whole cartoon itself. It's really awesome how much detail they put and they even have donuts, large donuts, which has really, really big donuts, which I don't think I'd be able to eat all by myself. 
But yeah, going through this area is kind of awesome. And if you're a real fan of The Simpsons, this is probably like a dream come true. And kind of like all the other sections in this park, it is over the top. Everything has so much detail. It's so colorful and it's just really worth coming to. Springfield was inaugurated in Universal Studios Hollywood on May 13, 2015, with a special meltdown at the Springfield Nuclear Power Plant signaling the grand opening complete with fireworks. Even though this area looks beautiful, it is a little bittersweet for me because this area was the old location for the Back to the Future ride, which was my favorite ride since it's my favorite film. That being said, the whole city of Springfield is really big and features many of the characters from the cartoon spread out through various areas of the city. Finding them is kind of like a treasure hunt. They even have a full-size Moe's Tavern, which is a bar inside as well as a family-friendly restaurant. Like all sections of the park, they have at least one themed ride for it. The one in this section is called the Simpsons Ride. The attraction is more than 4 minutes long and features two pre-show line queues that guests experience before boarding the ride. Its theme focuses on Krusty Land, a theme park built by and named after Krusty the Clown, in which his former sidekick, evil genius Sideshow Bob, attempts to get revenge on Krusty and the Simpsons family. In this park we have quite a lot of different sections which usually show really big franchises that have to do with movies and TV shows, but in this section of the park, well, they specialize in minions. And it is really cool. There's quite a few colors. There's a lot of water. And it's also adjacent to an older part of the park, which is a French quarter of the park. And it is kind of weird seeing this in the middle of all these big franchises, as I said, but I don't really complain. I like seeing European style stuff. I like seeing French flags. I like seeing cafes and restaurants. I am European after all. But in the French Quarter and also the Minion Quarter, it is really cool. It's, it's, it's just a different kind of uh, feeling to this park, but there is quite a few colors. There's a lot of water, there's a lot of people running around and a lot of music like there is in pretty much every section of this park. And yeah, when you're paying big ticket prices to come inside Universal Studios, you want to see everything. So I'll say this place is worth it. Super Silly Funland, which is the Minion-themed part of the park, replaces the Coke Zone play area that was outside Terminator 2 3D. With its cute Minion statues spread out throughout this area, this is actually an area that is more focused on younger children. It has a play area for kids, as well as a pretty cool outdoor fountain-style water area too. Even though the rides are kitty based it is pretty to look at all the decorations and can be a little bit of a quieter area if someone is looking for a few minutes of peace amongst the craziness of the park. This section is also a continuation of the main commercial street at the entrance of the theme park. This is why there are so many restaurants and places to sit down. One thing that is pretty interesting about Universal Studios theme park is the fact that there are different levels to it. There's the upper level of the park, which has Harry Potter and the commercial district and also City Walk, which is outside the park. But then they have a bunch of really long escalators that go down the hill and then there's a second part of the park which has a bunch more other rides which are really cool and obviously have to do with different other franchises that have to do with Universal like The Mummy, a Jurassic Park, Transformers and then they have the new section which is Nintendo World and since this is the first time I've gone to Universal Studios since they opened this section of the park I'm super excited to see how it looks like and seeing the level of detail that they put in all these things I'm sure it's going to be a treat. In the central part of the descent, there's a viewing area which gives beautiful views of the surroundings, including an adjacent golf course and a bird's eye view of the Universal Studios City Lot, which is a very active studio where they film many movies and TV shows all year round. Once at the bottom level of the park, we are treated to a section dedicated to Jurassic World, filled with dinosaurs and many green areas, as well as a viewing point that allows people to see the end of the Jurassic World ride in its epic splashes of water. In this area, like all sections of the park, the ride has a Jurassic themed store. Adjacent to this ride they have the Mummy Roller Coaster which is a really fast paced roller coaster that goes both forward and backwards. In a bigger section of the park they have a Transformers ride which is a 3D themed roller coaster ride that blends 3D cinema screens and a physical roller coaster. This area of the park including the ride is military themed and offers photo ops with the Transformer and many decorations that are reminiscent of the movie franchise. This section of the park is literally heaven for me. We are in Nintendo World which is a new section of the Universal Studios Park and it is amazing. From an architectural point of view it is pretty crazy because they actually built a whole city. There's Peach's Castle, there's a bunch of memorabilia from different uh, Super Mario games going from Nintendo 64 all the way up to Switch and it is really cool to kind of see those little hints 
and there's also a lot of characters. I even saw Yoshi, which is animated, and it's kind of like a moving statue, and he is one of my favorite characters, but everything is so colorful, everything is so cool, and you can really see how much they've put effort into this. It's, it's pretty darn amazing. The entrance to Super Nintendo World is a large warp pipe leading to the foyer of Peach's Castle, which features a sun design on the floor and the cloud pattern on the ceiling, as well as a painting of bob Omb Battlefield and Tiny Huge Island from Super Mario 64. Past Peach's Castle, we end up in the heart of the Mushroom Kingdom, with mountaintops on each corner of the world. The amount of fandom that can be seen in this area is amazing. Pretty much every character perched atop the various hills is animated and really brings the video game world into the real life world. Even though Super Nintendo World in Hollywood is impressive, it is much smaller than the one located in Japan and lacks many of the rides and activities that are in the Japan location. Even so, this place is very well done and just thinking about how many moving parts are working at the same time is very overwhelming. There is one ride in Super Nintendo World called Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge, which is an augmented reality dark ride. The ride's exterior and queue are modeled after Bowser's castle. The queue gradually reveals that the ride's plot involves Team Bowser challenging Team Mario to the Universal Cup. The wait for this ride is probably the longest at Universal Studios being a new ride, but going through the various hallways which are themed to Yoshi's Island make it feel like a sort of museum ride. One thing that's crazy is that when you're waiting for these rides, well everything is pretty much decorated everywhere, so you are actually walking inside Bowser's castle and then you're gonna go into the ride, but the level of detail is just amazing. And even though those weights are kind of long, well, it makes it entertaining at least because, well, you get to see all the decorations. Adjacent to Super Nintendo World, there's my favorite attraction at Universal, which is a studio tour. This is a theme park signature attraction which travels through the working film studio with various film sets on the Universal Studios lot. The tour lasts about 45 to 60 minutes and the tour is led by a pre-recorded video guide by Jimmy Fallon. The bus tour passes through many sets from the Universal movies, such as Psycho with its old-style era motel and house, Back to the Future with its central plaza and some of the cars featured in the Back to the Future series, The Sting, The Great Outdoors, and the Paramount DreamWorks film War of the Worlds with a very impressive deconstructed plane to make it look like it just crashed. There are also general purpose sets visited on this tour, such as the neighborhood Wisteria Lane from Desperate Housewives, and a neighborhood it is made to look like an old western town. This same street was recently used in the Tarantino movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The tour also winds through sound stages with very immersive cinema screens. The tour guide explains what movies, television shows, music videos, commercials, and or still camera photo shoots are currently shooting on the lot. The sun is setting and it was a really beautiful day right here at Universal Studios. And yeah, we did do quite a lot of rides. We saw quite a lot of things. There's so many franchises, there's so many different types of places at Universal City Studios. And the lot also, the backstage lot where they film the actual films is amazing. I wish I could actually walk there, but yeah, I'm just somebody going to the amusement park. But yeah, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy it, please be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment too. Let me know if there's other things in the park that I missed. The park is big and there's quite a long line every time you want to go and do a ride. So it's kind of impossible to do everything in one day, except if you come during really off season. But yeah, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next video.